Battletech is in a really, really interesting position right now. Perhaps, and I would say, I would wager the best position that it has ever been. And this is coming from a fan, an enthusiast, a war gamer who's been playing Battletech for a long, long time. We've got new art, new materials, new source books, updates, new miniatures, updated plastics, and not just a small, narrow starter set, although the game of Armored Combat is fantastic, but complete lances for the inner sphere, for the clans. I mean, the clans alone for plastic is worth the price of admission. Not to mention updated sites, hex maps, dice, everything with the Kickstarter. But even outside of the Kickstarter, this commitment to be pushing the hobby forward. And it's a great time to be a Battletech player. But is that enough? That's the question we're going to ask in this vlog and and really kind of look from the perspective of open resources if we wanted, if you wanted, or if we thought that this would be a great direction, a good direction for Battletech to go, bringing it to the level of where it is well-known, where it is played, to the point where, in theory, you can walk into any gaming store that is established and not only see Battletech product on the shelves, but see a healthy Battletech community. And I have to say, uh, living in New York, I'm about 30 minutes or so by train north of New York City, Westchester, New York, White Plains. White Plains is a city in Westchester. There are a number of gaming clubs. There's a number of stores in the area. Battletech, I played in the stores, but it's not an established time or place. It's kind of like show up and play or mostly playing a lot of my Battletech games with my friends and and kind of a really homegrown, tight-knit, close Battletech community. Now, that's awesome because by playing Battletech every week with some great players, you begin to build a player personality, a group personality, where you're open to experimenting, you're open to trying different things, and you can really focus on that immersion. But getting new players in is important to any hobby. New players translates to new dollars, which translates to new kits and new plastics and new stuff. Um, I'm going to use the example of Warhammer 40,000. And and that's not entirely fair, because Games Workshop, um, certainly the difference between GW and Catalyst in terms of scope, in terms of reach, in terms of just mass appeal, it's not entirely fair, but... And the IP for Warhammer 40,000 and Battletech is, is close enough in terms of the genesis of when it started, but both took vastly different directions. And the whole unseen thing really sunk Battletech for a while and its sale and its mismanagement. Battletech isn't behind and has been behind a number of years. But if we wanted to grow the community, if we wanted to have regular updates, new kits, new plastics, anniversary editions, special mechs, What is the way, what is the formula to make that happen? I was thinking about this and I'm going to say it. I'm going to say it. Competitive play, tournament play drives, tournament play needs to drive the community. Now I consider myself a narrative player. Uh, If you've been following my Battletech podcast, you know, I like big guns. I like expensive heavy assault mechs run up there blast you away try to punch you in the face literally and and just generally have some fun and if i know that i'm losing a mission i'm gonna make a last stand i'm gonna just just try and blow everything up to the very very end and i do my best to win but i want to make something memorable happen on the table i've been playing war games for a long time Invested a lot of real-time life force life hours, uh, often at the expense of writing papers and other academic things I should have been doing, and I wouldn't trade that. I've had my fill of glory. I've had my fill of of win. I want to have fun at this point. And and again, that's not to say I'm not trying to win. I used to be a very competitive Warhammer 40K player. X-Wing Miniatures, um, it's interesting. I love the Star Wars IP. But it doesn't consume my life, so I'm able to have that little bit of a separation. I play X-Wing Miniatures to play competitive. I play X-Wing Miniatures to be ruthless. I play to exploit the system and win, not unfairly, but understanding it. And I understand how that drives the narrative players. But I would consider myself a narrative player. And I, I push that out because with any war game, including Battletech, well, I think Battletech tends to be more narrative right now, 
There are lots of ways to play it. I'm not just talking about Battletech versus Alpha Striker, as we used to call it, classic. I never really liked that designation. Classic Battletech versus Alpha Strike. However you want to enjoy your miniature collection. You want to do it competitive. You want to do it narrative. You want to do it tournaments. You want to do it RPG campaign. It's all good. And, and we should. We have the miniatures. We should explore it. But the reason why I say competitive play draws and grows a hobby. Um, Games Workshop for a long time, Warhammer 40,000, it was played. It was popular. It had support, meaning you could most of the time walk into any realistically established gaming store or gaming club and, and find not only product but but players. And it wasn't that hard to get into the game, not only with starter sets, but to find a community, to really find a community. That blew up. Um, there's different editions of 40K. That exploded in 5th edition when Games Workshop made a commitment to, at the end of 4th and beginning of 5th, to really support the tournament scene and hold tournaments, support tournaments. When they dumped that, when Games Workshop decided to dump the tournament scene and basically offer no support, for a long time, their sales got hurt. X-Wing Miniatures took a big bite. Other gaming systems took a big bite. The reason why competitive play drives players is it drives sales. It drives sales. I mean, you're always collecting new stuff, but if you regularly engage in tournaments and you're regularly trying out new metas and you're regularly trying out new things, that pulls the players forward. And it even captures... It even captures 40K, other systems, pulling in players. It captures the narrative players, jumping to Warhammer 40,000 to compare for a second. I was originally a narrative player, and 40K at the time was uh, just kind of playing locally at the club, and I was playing a lot of Warhammer 40,000. My buddy Jawa Balls got involved in the game. I, I, I pulled him into it, and... Just to play more games, you know, the club was only open once a week. And, and of course, we were getting together and, and hanging out and playing on our own. But we wanted more 40K. And we just started looking at other stores in the area, Long Island, Brother Grimm's Games, and just uh, back in the day and going to tournaments. I, I never played in tournaments before. I, I would turn down tournaments. And getting involved in that is a chance to play more 40K. A chance to play more Battletech, a chance to bring in more players. It's, it's advertisement, it's competition, it's good some of the times. That's the primary driving force that I see in a lot of games. Um, Fantasy Flight does a great job because they call it organized play. You could do narrative play, but having that support from the stores, having that support from the company, having that support with the incoming of new products, that's what grows a community. That's what takes it from just a couple of people playing in the corner to that support. Now, there are other ways. I mean, Games Workshop definitely has a little bit more support for organized play, tournament play. What they're trying to break into to support it, and this is what, what Battletech has, because it's about exposure. It's getting out there. I mean, X-Wing Miniatures is the perfect example. Everybody knows Star Wars. You don't even have to know how to play the game. As soon as you see those ships, as soon as you see that X-Wing, as soon as you see that TIE Fighter, it doesn't matter. You, you, you just know the exposure is so great and, and you're brought in and it's pretty painted and the rules are pretty fun and it looks it's deceptive, looks inexpensive, but it, it's just a total absolute money sink, but in, ex in a good way. In exploring that, the one thing that Battletech has that I think needs to be exploited more. The, the challenge, I think, is I don't really even know who the heck owns or commands the IP, but video games. That's, what battle, that, that's what's kept Battletech off of life support for a long time, and it's gone close. The fact that they have some amazing, uh, and this is over many, many platforms, both um, PC, back in the day, Xbox, playing MechWarrior, MechWarrior 2, um, just just across all platforms since what uh, when was when was Mech Warrior One on DOS playing it on uh, two eighty six it was like eighty something eighty eight eighty nine ninety um, or, or Crescent Hawks from that inception see how I tied that in all the way to now BattleTech has always done that right with the mechs Games Workshop has has tried to have um, media of video games and and movies but they've always just 
any 40k movie with the exception of Astartes and some some fan stuff death of hope is just a, an absolute joke games workshop has has dropped that everywhere how there is not a grim dark movie um is is really kind of amazing um they haven't done that and if they do do that at some point and pull that forward that'll be a great boost an even greater boost for 40k but that is something battletech has done correct I think if they had some competitive play, and I think if they had enhanced and really pushed the IP for movies, for videos, could be even fan content, that would take Battletech to the next level. And if there's ever a time to do it, and then I'm going to turn it over to you guys in the comments, if there's ever the time to do it, now is that time, because again... There's the Kickstarter delivery, there's the new plastics, the new kits. I mean, this this is the time. This is the golden age of Battletech. 